Yes, I, th I think there are pretty serious conflicts of interest, which partly explain, I think, why um, theoretical economics has, has had this rather dysfunctional role. Uh, basically, economics for the last 30 years has been uh, a legitimizing ideology for uh, the political transformation that began in the late 70s and early 80s, uh, the so-called market fundamentalism uh, in economics, has been used to uh, justify and make apparently inevitable uh, many of the social and political changes that we've seen over the last 30 years. The conflict in, of interest uh, are pervasive everywhere in, in the economy because uh, there is a, a kind of hiatus between the theory and uh, the market as they are, as they are. We are describing a world where Asians uh, have no economic power and the reality, what we are observing, is exactly the contrary. We are not uh, also taking into account um, the importance of um, social capital, the importance of social connection. I don't think uh, economics uh, is uh, particularly uh, bad in that respect compared to other professions. You know, I mean, doctors uh, that, uh, that routinely prescribe uh, drugs, I mean, not tell, uh, without telling the patient that, uh, that he has been to a nice conference in the Bali that <laughs> funded by a particular drug company whose drug he is uh, had, uh, kind of pres prescribing at the moment. So, I mean, I don't think that uh, we that, uh, can blame the economists that, uh, I mean, too much at, uh, for being exceptionally uh, kind of uh, uh, sinister in this regard. I think there can be interest of conflict of interest. Do I actually believe that this is that this has paid a played a major role. I actually tend not to believe that it's played a major role. What the people I know tend to be saying what they believe. There may be a side of, of some of uh, my colleagues which is re more research oriented and a side of it which is more policy oriented. So if you, when, when you are in policy, you have to be convinced of what you are doing. Even if you're not totally sure, you have to show that you are totally sure. Because you cannot implement policies if you hesitate much. Uh, you have to hesitate before you elaborate the policy, but when the policy is elaborated, you have to push for it. So it's true that the state of mind that you have when you do research where doubt is always there, and the state of mind that you have when you are policy advisor or policy implementer is different. Alors then some people are involved in both. Uh, and they may face a conflict with, with themselves. I think that's the kind of conflict that you face. I was uh, testifying uh, before the Senate Committee on Finance uh, a few weeks ago, and um, Senator Carper came in. And the senator sat down and they turned to the chairman, Senator Baucus, and said, Mr. Chairman, this is a rare day in the history of the Senate Finance Committee. It is not often that we have before us on our witness panel, the star of an Oscar-winning documentary, Inside Job. And he turned to the man sitting next to me, it was Glenn Hubbard. Uh, and I must say, I've never seen the more, um, shall we say, uh, a f devastating reduction of a witness. If I remember Inside Job, I think that Rick Mishkin was naive in thinking that he could learn enough about Iceland quickly. Um, to write a report that would be of great use to anyone. Whatever errors of judgment, Glenn, mistakes of judgment, Glenn Hubbard made during his role as a federal regulator, um, they weren't because he overestimated the power of the efficient market hypothesis. Um, rather, I think, um, or because he was looking forward, either consciously or unconsciously, to getting large sums of money as a consultant for Wall Street firms. I think they were an exaggerated view of how good the Federal Reserve would be at stabilizing the macro economy. Um, and also an exaggerated view of what the value of additional competition would be in financial markets in terms of reducing the outsized earnings of the financial sector. You know, if you have a, a major kind of paid appointment uh, in a financial institution, as I say, non-executive director or something. I think uh, that kind of thing sh should be declared. Yeah? I was one of the signatories of uh, 
of the um, recent statement by um, economists uh, about, you know, should there be an ethical code or a code of ethics, if you will, for economists? And I say absolutely yes. Um, I mean, there's, I'm not an expert on this, but there seems to be plenty of evidence that numerous economists um, are, you know, were during the 1990s and early uh, 2000s being financed by companies that are um, engaging in practices that maybe some of us would like to change, especially here at INET, we would like to change those practices. And yet the economists themselves have not been willing, the ones that are, you know, um, employed or, or paid by, by those companies, they're not coming out in the open and being honest about the relationship between the, the theory that they promote in the classroom and the, uh, you know, the, the ba financial backing, if you will, and social backing of, of the arguments that they're making. The business of reestablishing a destroyed reputation uh, is a very slow business. Um, and I, well, individual reputations may well survive. Um, it, the reputation of the profession took an enormous hit from the way in which the economics profession denied the possibility uh, that uh, financial crises could occur. The, the whole uh, nonsensical story of, that would lay behind the so-called new consensus on monetary policy a few years ago it was carrying on uh, right into the crisis itself. I don't think it's really about a code of ethics. I think it's about uh, economists, and I think particularly ac uh, academic economists, uh, applying the sort of standards of serious scientific uh, rigor that, apply, that are applied both in other scientists, uh, sciences and other uh, humanistic disciplines to what they're doing. And the true standards of rigor are not about mathematical rigor or mathematical consistency, but about the relationship between what we are doing theoretically and how it corresponds to the world that we claim to describe. You know, that's the real test. If you are paid by someone, you cannot be a regulator for someone. You know, that's uh, up to, uh, you know, there was this conflict of people re being regulator. But we, that was mentioned yesterday also by Larry or others, uh, you know, that so, Usually people who know well an industry have good links with the people in the industry and, and you want them to be competent. So that, of course, uh, raises, but that's a problem also for society to solve. You see what I mean? Do you ask Mr. X, whom you know had the links to be involved or not? Or do you ask a completely new guy who doesn't know much about the industry, but at least you know that he doesn't have connection? Uh, and that's a question for society to solve.